All right, gang, welcome to the next video in the tutorial series on how to play Office Onslaught. What I thought would be a good thing to do right now is to do a brief overview of deck building mechanics in general and a uh, run through a couple of player turns using information that we've learned from previous tutorials, basically forming teams, um, hiring teams to your um, deck, uh, overcoming tasks or overcoming drama and accomplishing uh, completing tasks. It's going to be a good way to see the mechanics of what one player side looks like or one player turn looks like. We're going to repeat several of those so that you can see the mechanics of how deck building plays into uh, the basic functionality of the game here in Office Onslaught. Okay, so let's dive in uh, and talk a little bit about deck building as a mechanic. If you're not familiar with deck building, what deck building is, is we're going to start off with a few number of cards. In this case, our starting deck is nine cards. Um, and <clears throat> it's a low number. Over the course of play, we are going to add cards to our deck, which is this is, means this is going to get bigger and bigger, and it's going to improve with uh, better cards as we go. So you're, you're, you decide how you want to grow your team or grow your deck over time. Okay? All right. So you're going to draw five cards. That's my cat. All right. So this is my starting hand. We have four cards left over. One thing that I'm uh, uh, that you'll notice from previous vid videos is we have a green card here. We'll talk about what that is in a minute. That's just a way of keeping track of whether or not you've gone this turn. It's called our priority card, and I forgot to include it in previous videos. All right, so with our starting hand down here, these represent the amount of work that we can produce. So here, uh, our cleric produces one yellow, one ice, Paladin, one red, one ice. And you can see two, uh, two blue and one fire. And as we go, you can see those values. What we're looking to do is to combine the work up here in order to overcome the cost associated with uh, cards on the board. So our options so far, uh, and this is a kind of just preset with some options so that we can see what we might be able to do with cards in our deck. So right here, we have uh, the th three-star sorcerer, which takes a cost of six. We have a two-star bard that takes the cost of four, and a two-star barbarian, which takes the cost of four, okay? So what we're going to do in order to play is we're going to announce that we are going to go. Usually there's gonna be a good conversation that happens between players to decide who's going when. Um, and let's say that I want to get this bard here. So I need four, and I need to balance out my heat value. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull my high point value uh, pirate, um, and then I'm gonna need one ice to balance that out. So I'm gonna throw my paladin with one ice. That gives me three production total with one ice. And then I'm gonna throw in my sorcerer here that balances out the four. So I can look here and this uh, four over a white box, white meaning that you can use any color. That will satisfy the hiring component, which means I'm going to pull the bard into my discard pile, placed right next to my draw, draw pile here. These cards are used, are currently in play. We're gonna hang out there until I'm done. And we're going to move over here and replace the card, or the uh, uh, applicant with a new one. Now, I do have these two um, cards left over in my hand. Uh, I can review if there was anything I could do with these remaining two, I could still play. But right now, there isn't anything else that I can do with these cards, so I'm going to get rid of them here, move the whole hand into my discard pile, and then I'm going to draw five more cards. One, two, three, four. So there's only four cards left in my second hand. 
And this uh, is another principle of deck building, which is uh, what we're looking for is we take our discard pile, shuffle it, and it becomes our new draw deck. So what we're going to do is we will flip that over. We'll move that to be our next draw deck. We'll shuffle it. All right. And then we're going to draw our next card. Okay. And good news, we just drew our um, the card that we had just hired. Now that would be the end of our turn. We would flip over our priority card right here to indicate that we have gone, and we would let the next player uh, go through with their turn. And uh, then once he or she was done, they would flip over the uh, their card to red to indicate that they've gone. Once all players have their uh, cards flipped over to red, we would then go into the review phase and the board would retaliate against us in a variety of different ways. For the purposes of this tutorial, however, we're just going to um, do several turns, several player turns here just to see what uh, what we can do. Okay, so after the end of the review phase, we would flip that back over, all players would be able to go again, uh, and we would have our hands available to us. Okay, so the what I'm going to look at here is, do I have the ability to generate six? We have this cost for our three-star sorcerer, which is a better card. Um, let's see if I can muster that. So we have our, we're going to play our barbarian for two, three, four, five, six. It looks like I will be able, if I play all of them, To generate that six, two, three, four, five, six, and we only have that barbarian that has this fire value that's uh, uh, positive. All of the rest of the cards I have have ice that balances us all out, so that will enable me to hire my sorcerer. I'm going to take my hand since I don't have anything else, and I'm done. I'm going to put those all in my discard pile. Maybe. Okay. And then I'm going to draw five more cards. There we go. Draw five. That would be the end of my turn. And I would start the next turn by moving this over into my draw deck, flipping it over. Shuffling the deck, and now I have a new draw deck. Oh, and I forgot to replace the card here. In here. All right. So we would then have everybody go through and play. We want to then flip this over. It is now our th uh, third turn. And I want to see if there's any work that I can accomplish up here. Okay, sorry. Any... Um, tasks that I can overcome. We've talked about how to hire. We hired both a cost four and a cost six. Um, now I want to look at our task cards. And I actually have to zoom in here for technical reasons. <clears throat> this takes four, four of any color plus one yellow, which means I have a total cost of five, uh, but some flexibility on how I want to do that. Now, it does look like I will be able to get my one yellow through here. Let's say that that's our sorcerer. Then I need four of any other type. So that's two, three, four. Okay, we have a little bit of balancing of heat that we might need to do. So let's uh, place these cards down and see what we can do. So we will use our yellow. This gives me two. And it includes the one yellow that we have here. So we have two of five with our yellow satisfied. I'm going to do three of five. And it balances out my heat. Now, if I did three of five here and then tried to go four five to make the five of five, that's not going to be a, an effective team because I have a positive heat value. So that's not going to be allowed. What I do have the option of is to play the other two cards. That gives me my two plus 
these other two is four, five, and my positive ice value. This right here will satisfy the requirements for this task, our crunch time. And that means that we're going to add it to our discard pile the same way that we did our hired card. So this is going to go, we're going to get this card. It's going to go here. There's nothing that I can do with this leftover card. So I'm just going to put that into my discard pile. This goes here. Oops. We're going to put all of these cards into our discard pile. And then we're going to draw five more cards. OK. This would then get flipped over indicating that I have completed my turn and the rest of the players would be able to go through and complete their turns. All right, so I wanna see if we can do a couple more turns to just kind of reinforce what we've talked about so far. And when I draw that coffee to my hand, we're gonna see if we can take out or, or overcome one of the drama to uh, demonstrate that kind of the last step of things that you do with forming teams and deck building. All right, so we're going to flip this back over. All right, let's see, I'm gonna check up here. I do have a uh, net troll that has a total of five for one blue. That's one blue, two blue, three, four, five. Looks like I'll be able to satisfy it as long as I can stay positive on heat value so that I will then play my bard. One, two, three, four, five. All right, this is going to satisfy that task. I will then put this task into my discard pile. There's nothing. Oh, this is actually a um, opportunity to do a little add on rule. I wasn't going to include it here, but uh, uh, no reason not to with where we are. The only time the heat rule does not apply is when a card is played on its own because the frustration value right here uh, really relates to working as a team. If the uh, work value is high enough to do something on its own, you don't have to balance this. In other words, the uh, character isn't working with anybody, isn't going to piss anybody else off, and so it can do work on its own. Very characteristic of a sorcerer as well to go off and do what they want on their own. So what that means is I can take this four value, not concern myself with the two fire right there, play that on a team on its own, so by itself, soloing, uh, and that will be able to pay for one of the cost fours that's right there. So I'm going to say that we are going to go for our Barbarian in that case. Go here. Uh, that's actually a really good turn to demonstrate the fact that you can hire um, uh, both complete tasks and hire in the same turn using uh, the deck building mechanic, okay? So we're going to go here and replace our card immediately. Our turn is then going to be over. We're going to move all of our cards into our discard pile here and draw five, which means I need to create a new stack. All right, then we're going to draw the remaining four. All right. Once everybody has had this turn to red, they would all. Uh, we would then do another review phase. Once that had been completed, we would flip this over to green. We would be ready to go again. All right. So it looks like we drew our yellow task into our hand. This means that when we draw the task, what we're looking at is this. Uh, because of technical reasons, let's move it up here and zoom in. The top left corner shows us the resource that it generates. So in the case of workers, it's showing the type of work that they generate. With tasks, it's showing you the type of coffee that they generate. And so coffee is a resource for doing a variety of different things that we'll discuss uh, in later videos. Um, but <clears throat> for now, what we're using it for is as it's uh, to generate coffee to overcome a drama. So what we're looking for here that generated a yellow coffee. So with that yellow coffee, we're, what we're looking for is this cost box 
upper right hand corner same thing with uh, our tasks we're using the same rules uh, for forming teams in order to satisfy work and then we're looking for the type of coffee that we have so as with other uh, cost indicators in the game white means that you can use any color if we were to look at uh, the gatekeeper here we would need a red coffee so with the task that we drew that generates our yellow coffee up here that means that we can satisfy or we can overcome this one if we so choose with our uh, yellow coffee or over here night school with our yellow coffee because these both are white and have can have any color used but we would not be able to use it for this one that shows that we would need red okay so now what we're trying to do is we're trying to get to either five yellow or four blue uh, with a total of six in order to make the rest of that happen. Let's see if there's anything else that we can do. Oh, did we just manage to make it? Looks like we just managed to make it. That's so exciting, especially for a tutorial video. Um, we have our sorcerer that generates four yellow. So we're four out of five for night school. We have our other yellow over here, which this generates our five of five yellow and acts as one blue against this uh, one, sorry, one um, ice that works against this fire right here. We would then be able to get this other ice in here that'll ba perfectly balance out. We'll, that'll give us four, five, and six. Am I doing math right? Yes, six. Um, that balances out the heat and then also allows for use of our coffee. So this right here will give us the six that we need in order to complete the drama. Now there are some specific rules for what happens with uh, completed drama, so I'm gonna save that for another uh, tutorial. But right now you will have completed this. It will either, um, directly promote your character or be saved for another time. Right now, let's just save it for another time. It'll live up here. These cards would then be used. And then one final thing. This video has a couple more components to it than I would have expected, but I do want to point out your workers are a renewable resource, so those are going to go into your discard pile every time. When a coffee is used, and we use that to overcome our drama above, it's going to then be recycled, which then goes into our task recycle pile, okay? And there's a variety of different things that we can do with our coffee, um, but every time we choose to use it, it will then go back into our task recycle pile. Um, if it's at the end of the turn, if it's left over in our hand, we do have the option of putting it directly back into our recycle for use in a later turn.